and welcome to Clapia. In this video, we will see how to create a car inspection or vehicle inspection app with Clapia. There will be an inspection form to capture the vehicle details and all inspections or repairs carried out. You can have PDFs and then also set workflows for the app. For example, once the car is ready to be picked up, a notification can be sent to the customer or if there are delays, reminders can be sent to the inspector or mechanic to finish the work. So let's see how to create this app. Once you sign in to Clapier, you can get started by clicking on new app or creating it from Excel or even with the help of AI. There are videos on how to get started, so do check it out. It'll be linked in the description. The app I will be creating in this video will be made available in app templates if you wish to use the same and modify it. You can head over to app templates on the left panel of your dashboard. Select the template and on the right panel, click on import. Once you import your template, Go back to your dashboard and the app will be made available over here. Now let's get started in creating the vehicle inspection app from the beginning. If you already have a layout maintained in spreadsheets, then you can go ahead and use this option to get started. But if you are just starting out afresh and not sure of what to include, you can always use AI assistance, which I will be doing right now. I'll head over to ChatGPT and get some fields for the app. Now here, I'll just type in a prompt asking it to create a vehicle inspection table. Make your prompt as detailed and precise as possible so that it knows what you need in your app. Okay, so I have given a prompt like this. Now I click on enter so that ChatGPT can analyze it. It has given me this output and I think it should be pretty okay. If you'd like, this prompt will be in the description. It may not come out exactly the same, but you can alter the prompt according to what you need. I'll download this and open it with Google Sheets. You can use Excel or any other spreadsheet. If you use spreadsheets and want to turn that into an app, make sure you keep a single header with some values in each column. There is a separate video on this linked in the description. I'll just alter this table according to my requirements. All I'll do is delete a few columns and change some of them into drop downs, which have values such as these. So if you're using Google Sheets and want to turn a column into a drop down, select a column, click on drop down, change the range from I2 to I6, remove body condition, which is the header, add any other options that you require and click on done. The reason I'm converting some columns into drop downs is because when I upload the sheet into Clapier to convert it into an app, the system will automatically detect the drop down columns and convert it into either a drop down or a selector in the app. Also, do maintain the date format. I'll now convert the remaining similar columns into drop downs and delete some unnecessary columns. I have now modified this table. As you can see over here, I will give a name to this file and download it. Now in my Clapier workplace, on the left panel, I'll click on more and then select create app from Excel. I will upload the spreadsheet that I downloaded on the right panel. Then click on upload and create app. All the fields from my spreadsheet will appear over here. And you can see there are some fields that have appeared as selectors. That is because I converted some of the columns into drop downs in my spreadsheet. You can also see date fields. It is also given the name of the app as per the spreadsheet. Now that I've got my app, I'll make some slight changes to it. First, I'll give a name to the section, let's say inspection details, so I can give that on the right hand panel. Save this and to add more sections to your app, simply click on add section and on the right panel, give in the name, like so. You can keep adding as many sections as you require. I have now added extra sections to this app, all of which are empty at the moment. Now if I want to separate these fields into all the different sections, I can simply select a field and drag and drop it around. Let's say status needs to go to the final assessment, so I can click on it and drop it over here. Similarly, I can do this for the other fields. And I can drag and drop the fields each of these sections. So I'll just do that quickly. Okay, I have now rearranged the fields into the sections that I created. Like so. Now for each of the sections, I will add fields that I require 
delete unnecessary fields and modify the existing ones according to my requirements. So let's say for the inspection ID, I will need this field to automatically generate IDs. For that, I can click on the plus button, select unique numbering block, and on the right panel, I'll give in the name inspection ID, give a prefix, let's just say ID, minimum length to be generated, nine, and it shall start from one. And I can delete this field. Here, I'll add one more field, to capture the time. So I'll click on add field and select the time selector block. In the advanced section, I will enable default to current time and not allow the user to change the time. Save this. Similarly, I can do that for the date field. Go to the advanced option, default to current time, disable the other options and save it. Now this particular section is done. I'll move on to the next, which is vehicle details. For the odometer reading, it is a single line text block. If you're unsure of what the field is, you can always hover over this icon at the top and it'll let you know what it is. So for this field on the right panel, I'll go to advanced and under validation, I will select number since the odometer reading or the mileage is always in numbers and save it. Since in chat GPT, it only gave me the owner, I will add two more fields for the email and phone number. So again, add a field, a single line text block owner email. In the advanced option, I can give a validation for just capturing emails and no other text and add another field to get the phone number. Save it. For this next section, which is exterior inspection, when the inspector or mechanic is conducting the inspection, they might need to take photos or videos. And especially for exterior inspection, if they have to take it for every option, then I can make use of the camera images and files block. So for this particular field, I click on the plus sign, click on camera image and files, change the name, let's say upload photo, go to the advanced section and under allowed file types, if I only select images which is through camera uploads, then the inspector or mechanic will not be able to upload any photos from their gallery. So I make that selection and click on save. Now I want this particular block with the same configuration for every other option. So for that, I can go to the top and click on copy. You can see this block has now been copied with the same configuration. I can then place it where I need it to be. I'll copy the block four more times. Now let's say the inspector needs to take a 360 degrees view of the exterior. So I'll add a final camera block. Name it like so. Go to the advanced section. Under allowed file types, I'll select videos. Now the last thing for this section, I will add a multi-line text block so that the inspector can type in some notes. Now moving on to the next section, instead of adding the camera block for every option, I will simply add one common camera block. And under the advanced section, I will allow only camera uploads and videos. And add another field for the multi-line text block to capture notes. Similarly, I will do that for the rest of the sections. Now I've added a common camera block and a multi-line text block for every other section, like so. For the final section, which is final assessment, I have a field called status, which I will change to repairs. And I will make this block a required field. So if I enable this option, you can see a red star mark has appeared, so a user will not be able to make any submissions to the app if this has not been filled in. I will also do that for the next due date. Now I'll add a final field for capturing the signature. So there you have it, a basic layout of a vehicle inspection app. Now if I go to app home, this is what it will look like. Now in this app, I'd like the signature field to appear only if the repair is completed. For that, I'll go to the design app and I'll scroll to the bottom where the signature field is, select it and on the right panel, I'll go to the advanced section. Over here, you can see display this field if. Here you can give display conditions to your fields or even sections. There is a separate video about this topic. You can check it out. It is linked in the description. So if you're familiar with using spreadsheet logic, we share a similar library. So if you have used logic and conditions like if, else or etc, the same can be applied over here. So like I mentioned, 
if repairs is selected as completed, then this field should be displayed. So over here, to pull up a field, type in at the rate repairs equals to completed. And that's it. Now if I were to go back to app home, scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see the signature block is no longer visible. But if I click on completed, it appears. If it is in pending, it does not appear. Now let's add some more to this app. I can go to configuration and add statuses. So when you see all the data in your app, you can check which inspection is completed or not. So on the right panel, I click on add status. One is pending, the other is completed. You can also change the color. Save this. I can also add a PDF by going to print settings. Click on add print template on the right panel. Click on this icon and you can start making your template. Again, there is a separate video on this if you would like to know this in detail. So let's say I start off by giving the heading. Now in my print template, I can pull in the fields from my app. So I'll start off by inspection ID. To pull up the fields, again, you can simply type in at the rate and you will get a list of all the fields from your app. For inspected by either I can use the inspector name or if you want to capture this automatically by the system, if the user logs into Clapia with their email ID, you can also use submitter name. This will be there by default. You can check out the video on user attributes to understand more about the default attributes available in Clapia. Now I'll fill in the rest of this template. You can also add tables. Simply click on table and type in. I have now made the print template, making use of all the sections and fields from the app. But as you can see, it is quite plain. If you want to format this to make it look better, you can do that by changing the HTML code of this print template. Click on the icon over here and you will get the source code. This HTML code automatically appears once you start filling in the print template. Change the code to change the layout of your print template. I will change it to how I want it to look. Like so. If you're unsure about using HTML code, you can always do a quick online search or you can even use AI assistance. The final part for this print template, I will enable header to include the logo. So I can insert images from my system. I can also change the width and height, centralize it, and now I can save this. You can also give a name to your print template. Now that this is done, I will set up workflows. To start adding workflows, simply click on add step and make use of the workflow nodes available. For this app, first for every new submission, I'll check if repairs have been completed or not. If they are, the status should be changed and an email should be sent to the customer. It should also wait till the next due date to remind the customer that their vehicle should get an inspection. If the repairs are not completed, then change status to pending and send reminder notifications to the inspector or the mechanic. So as for the logic, I'll first use the if node to check if repairs are in pending or completed status. So at the rate, repairs equals to pending, which is the option that I'd given in my app. I'll add another if node to check if it's completed. Now, if it is pending, first I'll change the status of the submission to pending. So I'll use the edit submission node, select the app whose submission needs to be edited which is the vehicle inspection app. So it's this app itself. For the filter, I need to map it to the submission. For that, I will use submission ID. Submission IDs are automatically generated by the system for every new submission. And they are unique for every submission. Now for set field values, once the submission is found, I click on add field. Here I'll select status. It should be changed to pending and click on save. Along with the change in status, if I need to send reminders to the mechanic to complete the repairs, I can send them a notification every day. So let's say I want to send them for three days in a row, starting from the next day. So first I'll use a wait note, change this to wait till. I'll wait till the next day, so which is submission date plus one, let's say 10 o'clock as the time. Now after waiting for a day, I'll use a repeat node to keep sending reminder emails. Underneath the repeat node, I'll use another wait node to wait for a day. So if I'm waiting for a day in seconds, that'll be these many. Check if the repair is still in pending status. And if so, I can send out a mobile notification and save this. If you do not want to send out mobile notifications, you can also send out an email notification. Just given their email address, 
Type in the subject and body. You can also include PDFs over here. Now, if the repair has been completed, first change the status of the submission to completed. So, Vehicle Inspection app, map it to the same submission ID and change the status. Simultaneously, send an email to the customer. So, for the email address, I can pull up the owner email. So in this way, you do not need to manually give in the email address. It will automatically pull it up from the submission. Given the subject and body. I'll enable the option to include the PDF. And save this. Now along with this, if the repairs are completed and the next due date has been given, I can wait till one day prior of the next due date. So that will be. The next inspection due, minus 1, let's say 10 o'clock as the time. Send out an email notification to the customer that their vehicle inspection is due. For this, I probably don't need the PDF, so I'll just keep this disabled and I'll save this. Now, if you've noticed, I have added the workflow under new submission flow, which means that any new submission that is made to the app, this will run. But what if when edits are made to the submission, let's say the repairs were pending and then later on the repairs are completed. So the same submission would be edited. In that case, I'll go to edit submission flow. Since in this case, the repairs will be completed and the same workflow will follow, I can just copy this. So I'll click on copy workflow on the right panel. Select Edit Submission Flow. It should go under the Start node and copy the workflow. Now, if I go to Edit Submission Flow, you can see it has been copied. And since I don't really need to check whether the repairs are pending, I can simply delete this. If I delete it from the If node itself, all the nodes underneath it will get deleted. And only this will remain. You can also add some charts if you wish to your app. Go to Analytics, click on Chart, add the ones that you need and configure it accordingly. You can also add automated reports. Click on add report. And if you need reports on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, you can filter out your data and send it automatically. Once all this is done, go to step 5 which is distribute to give your users access to the app. Click on user access and under users, tap in their email ID to invite them. And you can give them different types of app permissions. So if they just need to submit the inspection and edit their own submission, you can give them submitter access and then click on assign. You can check out how to give user access in detail from another video linked in the description. Now, once you have finished creating your app, go to dashboard. The vehicle inspection app will appear and it is live and ready to use. So let me make a quick submission just to test out the workflow. I will give in my own email since I am using this fields variable in the email workflow node and since I want to test it, I need it to come in my inbox. I will give in some random details. Now I filled in some random details in this app as you can see over here and I have not filled in these two fields. If I click on submit, it will not allow me to do so since it is a required field. Since I am testing it if it is pending, I will test out the completed workflow part. So I will click on completed. You can see the signature block appears. I'll fill in the due date. Let's say it's one year from now. And submit this. Now based on the workflow, I should have received an email. So I'll just open that. I have received the email along with the PDF. Whatever I've submitted in my form has been captured automatically over here. This will also work in the mobile app. All you'll have to do is download the Clapier app either on Play Store or App Store. And the moment you create your app, it'll be live and ready to use. To view all your submissions, you can go to the Submissions tab. And this was the submission that I just made. You can also see that the status has automatically been captured over here due to the workflow. So this is one way of creating a vehicle inspection app in Clapier and you can find it in app templates for you to modify and use. If you have any query on how to create this app or on any other feature in Clapier, you can always request support by clicking on the button over here or you can email us directly to contact at clapier.com and we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you.